Good day, everybody, and welcome to Comics Unlimited. Let me ask you a question. Do you collect your comics in the raw? Welcome to the Comics Unlimited podcast with your hosts, Glenn B. Fleming and Ted Davis. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Comics Unlimited. My name is Ted Davies. I'm an artist and author best known for my books, Retrieve and Grim 101. Who is the crazy guy next to me? He just left. My yeah. name is Glenn Fleming. I'm a writer, artist, and publisher. You can find all my stuff on Amazon, and there's lots of it there. Yes, that's the truth. That is the truth, and that's good. Good stuff. Um, we are proud to have Cashman's Comics as a sponsor of our show. Check out everything that John Cashman's doing in Bay City. Been there 26 years running the comic shop, say hello to Petey the dog and check out everything that they have to sell there, including my books, soon to be Glenn's books too. So I know he'll, uh, he'll send everything out worldwide. I think as long as you pay for the postage and the product. So check out everything that John's doing at cashmanscomics.com. Um, so how you been, man? Everything good? Yeah, everything's great. Yeah. Just moving on. Uh, just trying to get this hatch thing out and just working out which, uh, platform to put it on, but it'll be out soon. I keep saying soon it's been coming a year. So, uh, but yeah, right. it's, it's, it's coming along. Uh, yeah, it's I'm, all right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. You know, it's it's going to be awesome, and I know people are going to be once once it gets out, you'll people are going to be wanting it terribly. I hope so. so I hope so. So I, I take um, it that your copy hasn't arrived yet. No, I and it 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 will. Our postal service, it's just part of the game. You know, yeah, yeah. it comes across the the water, and it's you know it takes time. That's all. Uh, but it'll get here. I'm sure it'll get here. Uh, so today, what we're going to be talking about is couple different things this is our comics unlimited this is the newest one uh we've got one more coming out soon it's going to be, uh, yeah, be a few weeks yeah yeah, yeah it should so by the end of the month probably this one here is a uh, comics uh number a uh, comics unlimited number 11 uh check out that one uh if you're a collector this is why we're here we are the this this magazine basically uh brings it all together and it's a it's a really a documentary uh, if that's the word yeah about yeah we have our articles and interviews with the the greats and lesser knowns and anybody we can uh, you know put their arm up the back to, to appear in the magazine <laughs> <laughs> but look at that wonderful artwork by ian gibson that's halo Absolutely. jones check out halo jones by ian gibson and uh, alan moore look incredible artwork. incredible art wonderful. and you know i think it's a real justice uh, of what we're trying to do here i I really got to commend you. I, I'm amazed every time that comes out, you do a tremendous uh, job on the layouts and everything else. The articles are fantastic. Yeah. And that's, and you know, I know I'm biased, but it's, it's a diverse set of articles and I, and I no, really appreciate that. Yeah. We've got such a, a rich uh, history of this thing. I've said to you before, mm -hmm. we've got uh, here, we've got at least hundred years, more 130 years of comics history as you guys do too sure. and so sure. does germany and france and japan and everybody we, we could we could never well hopefully we will but we could never live long enough to get through it because right. Be, right because while we're talking about stuff from 1948 today is happening so we have to report on that sometime exactly. you know so you know right but and this these, is such a great know, magazine it, it's a lot of nostalgia but really it is it is about the uh the love of the hobby and the love of the art form yeah. and that's that's what comics unlimited is all about so check out everything we're doing i will post it out here too uh as far as it's on glenn b fleming's uh amazon site so check out everything uh on glenn's site and you can purchase our comics unlimited there yeah cool all right so um today what we're going to be talking about is slabbed comics versus raw comics mm -hmm. um there's a there's a huge debate on a lot of it for a lot of collectors um I don't know. I mean, I, you know, we a little tongue in cheek about the, uh, the collect comics and the raw. I, I, last night I was telling you last night, I got rid of all the slabbed books that we had. That's right. It. So just, you just threw them all away. Did you? They're gone. You got no, rid of them. It, I can see they've gone. They've gone from behind you. Gone, there was right. There, there was, I don't know if you guys remember, week. but there was a stack up here. So, <laughs> Uh, 11 boxes worth of comics gone. Uh, they've oh. been moved on to, uh, another, other collectors are on their way. So, but, uh, wow. as far as the slabs and everything else, it's all gone. So, and that's, I think it's a testament because I think that it's important that we have, um, 
uh, for those who don't know what a slabbed comic is versus a raw comic, raw comic is basically uh, the comic itself. It's maybe in a plastic bag uh, with a board. Slabbed is it's actually sealed. It's it's usually by a certified company, which they stamp a, a rating system between uh, zero and ten, ten being the best. And uh, it's actually kind of, it, it preserves the the it ar archives the the comic itself. Um, there there's a couple things on that 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 could be a little tricky. But as far as a mandate on the product, though, when you're selling it, you know that you're buying a 9.8 version of this comic. It's been authorized. It's been uh, looked through by a professional, quote unquote. And um, that I think that's a safety net for people. It makes sense. And it's preserved. Uh, there's not you know, you're not going to have any bending, cracking, whatever. You can always open those um those slabs too, and then have them recertified or you, you can open them, you know, open them like a, uh, um, time machine. You know, you could basically open them and read them, you know, but you're, I think, defeating I the think, purpose. Yeah. I think what happens is that people, I've, I've never had a, anything slabbed. Maybe I should, but yeah. I probably won't. Um, it depends. I think it, I think you sort of cross a line sometimes and you become a collector, just a collector if you're going to slab them. But if you've got yeah. Spider-Man number one, yeah. And you want to preserve it. Why wouldn't you do that? So I can see yeah. both and sides that, of the argument. Yeah, I do too. And I think that it really depends. I If you haven't seen our last show, what we're doing now is we're doing a shorter format of the, the show, usually about 30 minutes. And we talked about, you can go back and look at it, but we talked about the, um, the fact that um, trade paperbacks are kind of a nice segue because you're not, reopening the yeah. old books and that kind of thing. So I think that that's a great alternative as well. So if you yeah. do have slabbed a material, you can always go back to the trades if you don't have the original, but it's in the slab, if that makes any sense or yeah, digital well, copies, whatever. I've, but, I've got a lot of the, those essentials that they used to publish. Yes. Like we were talking about. And this, last that's, it, that's like a double whammy for me, because not only do I not be, uh, you know, opening my original comic and spoiling it a bit more, it's in, they're in black and white, so you can actually see the artwork properly, you know, uh, without the color, the bad, yeah. the bad coloring that we all love for those comics, you know. Yeah, and uh, that for me, so that's a double thing for me. But I've got got lots of about, I must have 20 or 30 essentials back there, you know, the Thor yeah. and Spider Man and all these things. And mm -hmm. like I say, it's better than uh, just getting out the original one because the original ones are getting a bit, a bit smashed up. <laughs> right. Look at, the, look at the edges on that. Man. Yeah. Look at that. Incredible. Hold on. That, let that, me let bring it up again. Let me let that, me bring you. Well, that is my that's that's the original one that my brother brought home in 1965. Wow. That's why it's like that. That's you know, and, I, and I've got that's so good. You know, and I've got that's in better condition. That's that strange tales there. Yeah. That's you awesome. Know, and all, all these things. And like I say, the essential books or the you know, the reprints or whatever, because you're not you you've not got um how can I put it? Uh, that strange tales is it's, it's so it's not lying about. I mean, I mean you're not looking at it all the time, so you might as well put it right. away and try and get the an essential on it or whatever a reprint on it. That's right. that's the way I think. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for people that get slabs. It's great. I think mm -hmm. that the speculation market is a little crazy at times. I've even gotten lost in it, uh, and, you know, on a lot of that. And I think that it's is a very slippery slope. Um, but I understand why, and I, I think it's it, it's a responsible thing to do, like you were saying for for comics that are um, need to be archived. I think that is a brilliant way to keep them um, safe, and and it's a, it's a leveler. The biggest thing with the the certification companies is that I can see where marketing the market can be changed quickly. Yeah, the, it could be very all it could be altered, and I don't. And that's in general. I mean, that could be in any thing. It does. It's not just comics. Um, and I, that's my thing. You really have to get with a trustworthy company, whichever one you feel uh, works best for you. And, uh, you know, hopefully they're all up and up. I'm sorry if the dog's barking. I can't, whatever. We're just going to let it roll. Um, but let me show you this real quick. Um, as far as the, uh, I'm going to move on to this one here. And. 
Oh, Let me yeah. show you this one. Let me bring this up full screen. So what's nice about reader copies, especially I've got reader copies and this one here. Um, I love the, I love Mike Mignola. Anyway, everybody knows that I love Mike Mignola. So let's see what I got here. This Dracula um, book I brought out a couple times. Let me move this light a little bit. So it's not as sorry about that guys. Okay. This Dracula book though is, um, is, probably one of the my favorites i think that he did such a brilliant job on this he uh when is that from this is from 1992 i think if i'm not mistaken so, so i can double check i can double check because that looks like uh, gary Ullman's dracula doesn't it in the, it is is it, is it 94 uh, uh coppola let me film double check. hold on let me see what i got here i, can't I know I think it's, I it's think already coppola detached though you see this it's already yeah, detached from the way the it should be yeah right 92 92 i'm sorry yeah. about the dog barking guys Right. That's Calypso. She just wants to get on here for a couple minutes. Um, is that is that an adaptation of the film then? It is. So oh, what right. what they okay. did was Magnolia actually did a lot of the set design and a lot of the movie actually oh, right. um, breakdown. That. And for uh, Frank uh, Francis Ford Coppola brought him in yeah. as uh, one of the major. Uh, everything in the movie is based around Mike Magnolia's work. I, I really his uh, at least the visuals, um, and and Frank uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola as well. But you can see, I mean, that, this is what I like about um, not having things slabbed because in slabs, they become posters. You know yeah. what I mean? They're not really usable. Yeah. They're not really usable. They're, they're, yes, you've got that piece of art, but it's, it's encapsulated. This is what I like about it. You can get in and you can actually, this is why I like them in the raw because you can, you can enjoy them. Um, and I'm just, like I said, I'm just flipping through just to give an idea, but. I mean, ideally, it would have been nice back in 1965 if my brother would have brought home two copies of Strange Tales 136. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then looked at the other one. So the um, the biggest thing with a lot of this is the uh, just the fact that you can go through and not and don't worry about it. I mean, just enjoy the books. I mean, this is the this is the rub of it all. Uh, what's nice about this particular book, too, they have some uh, movie notes in here, which has just been dynamic. I. I really, really love the movie anyway. I mean, the artwork is just second to none. He's, I think that, and this is before Hellboy. So I think yeah. this is at the, he was just starting to get to be at the height of his game. I mean, he really yeah. was and is, I think, just an amazing artist. I mean, look at that. That's, that's just brilliant. Now, one of the things too, though, is, is that if you, if you don't have things that are um, slabbed, you put them in a plastic bag, like we said, bag and board, like we talked about. Yeah. Um, you know, which they, these aren't cheap anymore. They've, they've come up in price. But the other way to do it is also to have them in a top loader. These top loaders are a little bit more durable. Um, and they're, you know, you can see the, you can see the thickness on those. That is the way to do yeah. it. I mean, I, yeah. I, it's bagged and, you know, that it's, way it's, you can still. It's that, like a, it's like a semi slab, isn't it? It is. Right. And it had, and it's durable. I mean, the edges are really, I mean, everything's really the thick and durable. And it's, you know, this particular one, um, I don't, I might end up getting a slab. I don't know. I don't think I will, though. I think uh, it just, I, I really like, like we talked about, the smell, the the feel of a comic, the, yeah. the newsprint. Um, the less that this is um, touched, the better, you know. But again, you got to have the balance to it. I like to be able to read uh, cool. comics. And that's, you know, I can't, I can't for one minute think who might have drawn that cover. Uh, I believe it was uh, Ditko. I think it's Jack Kirby. Uh, it might be Ditko Inkin, but I think it's yeah, Jack maybe. Kirby. The, the foot here is the one that I always talk about. This is why I love this comic, because the foot is mm -hmm. just... Uh, but yeah, let's look at it. Let's see. Let's pull it out of the bag. Give me one sec. I should have already had this done, but... I bet it's Dick Cole, uh, Kirby layouts, whoever's done it inside. Let's see. This thing is old. All right. What a beautiful, uh, it's, it's a, it is a beautiful piece though, man. It's great, isn't it? It's fantastic. It is. All um, right. So let's see. Let's see if they even, man, they even tell you. Okay. So the publication date. They have Dick A is illustrated by oh, Don Heck. Don Heck. There you go. 
Well, good I'm, eye. Let me I'm, sur- I'm, sur- I'm, sur- over, sur- with it. I'm surprised it's not Kirby layouts, but that's that's my bad, as they say. Bring this down a little bit so we can well, see. Well, that's it. definitely a Kirby cover. It might be done ha- ink in it, but it's definitely a Kirby cover. Yeah. The Mandarin. You probably couldn't do him today, could you? Uh, they do. Some, they had a movie some, about it. Too, did they? So, well, uh, ben Kingsley was the uh, Mandarin. Bren, ben Kingsley? He's not. Yeah. He's not Asian. Right. I thought but he was I brilliant. Thought, I thought well, he brilliant. probably was, but I thought the Mandarin was supposed to be Chinese or, you know, that way. I mean, it's, you know, you got poetic license. You can change just by anything you want. Yeah, I would true. think this is from 1963. Um, wow. But uh, yeah, I'll, I want to be careful with this one. But yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Nice lettering by Ron Holloway. Oh, yeah. Yep. And these guys, I mean, you you are uh, very much uh, your era. You know these guys. I mean, I, I'm still learning even, even now. I still love, you know, I still love this look for iron that, man that design yeah yeah i mean i still love it but uh i have to say that don heck is not one of my favorite artists no. yeah i mean i can understand that totally well especially when kirby is such an iconic yeah uh creative you know <laughs> yeah right that's a little weird I can back this up to you a little bit here. I just I've, I'm trying to use this new uh, new system that we're, we're working on now. I with the with the camera, been working out pretty good though. This this top yeah. uh, top yeah, view, it's good. Yep. I like it, but it shakes a little bit. But wow. I love the tech. That's cool. Yeah. But um. Yeah, yeah I, I just I, I, yeah. I can yeah I can understand why uh, anybody would want to. Um, slap it well right and i agree and that's there's nothing wrong and it's a balancing act it's whatever you guys want to do as a collector i i really like uh like them raw you know i do i i think it's a it's a great it's almost like you've got to be more careful with it it's like you're you know how you said if you, you guys go back and watch the last video like i was talking about uh glenn said something about going to the bookshelf and pulling a book down and actually opening it and, and getting versus digital. Yeah. The whole, the whole experience of it, the whole um, practice, if you want to call it that is, is that's what it's about. It's the experience of that. Uh, and it's the, it's a feel of the paper. It's the smell. It's, you know, even this, I mean, you see this one page is ripped here. wonder right. how that happened over the years, you know, um, there you go. But, Wow. Yeah, Calypso and I are going to have a talk when uh, when we're off here. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, there you go. How about that that page? Yeah. Tales of the Watcher. Yeah. Love anyway, it it's crazy. But this is why I like not having them slabbed because we're able to actually look at the the rundown and the and the breakdown of the book, um, and we're the, you know just being careful with everything and just trying to. Trying to manage it so that it, it's they're so delicate, you know, you know what I mean. So I think it depends on it depends on um, I don't know. It depends what on your view in the way that I think I mentioned before that many years ago, one of the times I went to London, yeah, I went to see a Leonardo. It's supposed to be the very first cartoon. It's a Leonardo da Vinci pencil cartoon, sequential art. Yeah, and, and you Tell had me. to it's 500 years old and it's fading. It's not got long left. But what you have to do is you have to get to go into this room and press this button. It's like a green light shone on it and it stayed on for about 10 seconds and then it went off and you had to get out and then the next person came in. Now, wow. the thing is to me, you see, the thing is, is that they're trying to preserve it, but they're trying to show it. Well, you can't have both because one day it's going to be gone and nobody yeah. will have seen it. So I think that what they should do is just let, anybody see it for as long as they want and i don't care about people in 200 years time i was like, <laughs> do you understand what i mean i want to see i want to see it but it's going to it's like the, like i said to you about the um the old popeye movie uh, tv films whatever they were the, the 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 original negative from what 1930s is so yes. fragile that this i don't know whether they've done it but so fragile that a few years ago they were going to scan them 
but they but they said that in the process the originals would probably be destroyed yes well they're gonna if they're not very well these negatives they're going to disappear anyway they anyway have none of it right. so, so they have to figure out the balance of that again balance here <laughs> but yeah, i you know. Just um, get it done. Just, well, otherwise some of the, we're going to lose it. What was it? Nitrate? Didn't it, uh, they would catch fire, right? Some so, of that, yeah. And yeah. I don't know if it was if an animation cells were the same as uh, movies, but man, what a! I think here's the thing: it's technology changes all the time. So yeah. if they're going to be doing it, I think that yeah, they should have had you look at it longer than a 10 second run. Mm -hmm. I think for prime example is the new Van Gogh exhibit. I haven't been to it yet, but it's incredibly immersive. It's an, it's incredible. I've seen uh, my family have been to it. It's insane. And you're in his in his paintings. It's amazing. The the full concept of what you do, you go into these rooms that are fully. I mean, Starry Night and on and on. It's just incredible. There's got to be a way that we can experience um, something of that magnitude and maybe that format. I don't know if anybody's yeah. been to the the Van Gogh exhibit. You guys should check that out. Uh, if if so, you know, write it down in the comments because we'd love to hear about your input on that. I would love to see a Kirby esque comic setup like that, like they did with the Van Gogh uh, or Mike Mignola, completely immersive in that. Oh, that would be incredible. What would be incredible. good if they did if they did that show and it was a history of comics? Yeah, get right. So you so you could start with Siegel and Schuster. Oh yeah, wouldn't that be and something? Go through, uh, and uh, Prince Valiant and all those things, right. and we just could, go through the whole a, thing. They could do, yeah, they could do Charles Schultz. They could do all yeah. kinds of stuff. I mean, yeah. I watched a documentary on Charles Schultz on uh, Apple uh, a couple uh, weeks ago. What a great, what a great life! I didn't realize how he was. Um, he had a really tough time growing up. I didn't realize how quiet and shy he was, and you know, he got bullied quite a bit. But that became his mantra with yeah. with creating charlie brown incredible yeah. incredible using what experiences he had in his life to formulate uh an avenue of, of cartooning that affected billions of people and i mean making making a lot of money as well oh hell yeah he did incredible i saw a picture of him in 1965 with a in california parked outside his ice rink with uh his uh i think it was a 65 continental convertible it was um, sick i mean i was like wow dude that was he was balling <laughs> man he was balling i told you um when i went over to california last time i went to um there's a place in california called ontario not oh, ontario yeah, sure. you, yep. you've heard yeah, that right? well, yeah they've well, got a they've well, got an airport in ontario exactly that's that's where i was yep. and uh, I, <clears throat> I had a car from there went into the reception and behind the reception was that famous photograph of, a, of the apollo 11 crew before yes. they went, when they're all yes. together without the helmets yep. on, yep. as a as a mural. Wow! And it had been signed by them. I think it was a. I think it was actually a, a print on the wall, but it had been signed by the Apollo Eleven astronauts. And to the side was a were, were about six framed peanuts cartoons, really mm. big size. And Schultz had signed them like that right across wow. the lot of them. It was brilliant. And I thought, wow, that'll be so, uh, you know. On the Absolutely. recap of uh, on the recap of the show, what what is your take then? Um, well, slab the ones that are archival, archival, or, or what? What do you what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it it depends what you want to do with them. I can understand mm -hmm. both sides. Um, I I I wouldn't pay. I, I'd be upset if I took my one three my strange shows one three six to some guy. He'd probably say it was minus fifteen. The condition yeah. it's in, yeah. And, I, yeah. and I'd be saying, "What do you mean? It's at least a minus forty, you know, like yeah. like you do, right? You always sure. think it's you always think something's worth more than it is when you get what you ask for it. Sure. You always think, oh, I should have asked for more. They give me more. So I can see both sides of it, but uh, I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't do it. What I would do with my number ones, which I'm hoping to do, is sell them to people like you, mm -hmm. and I can have the money, and then you can enjoy them and slab them and, and do whatever. Figure you out want. what you want to do with them, yeah. right? And like well, we I, talked I, about, I like looking yeah. at the essentials and the reprints and for the re, for yeah. the reasons we've stated. Yeah, I. The other thing too is that uh, I the <clears throat> one of the reasons I like to buy buy and sell comics in the raw is that people can look through them. They can actually see yeah. if there's a coupon that's missing if you're looking for yeah. that type of collector, or there's a page missing. 
it's one thing about the slabs. It's good that they, they track things and they're certified and all that. Okay. I get that. And there's a certain price point at a certain level of where you're at. I get that too. But bottom line is I like, I like them in the raw <laughs> part. Well, well, well so, what you did the other week was you, when we went, I think we went through new gods one and my yes. inside back cover was different. And that's because yes. I, mine had fallen off as a, as had another one and I'd yeah. put the wrong one with the wrong one, you right. know? Yeah. And you point, and that's good because if I'd have gone somewhere with that, somebody might have known that and, and they might have been. Yeah. You know, right. Miffed. You, you yeah. know, this is uh, complete. And if you know? guys haven't seen that video, go back because there's a huge <laughs> shock factor in that one. Uh, check that out on the playlist. Cause it's, it's a nice a shot. Though. It's a nice yeah, shot. It's a good, yeah, it's a great shot. It's a good it's, shot. I think it's one of the best, uh, it's the best one of the best videos we've got, I think. Um, Dave, Dave Houston said, "Loved loved your my face when when yeah, you right. saw that." I know. <laughs> it was, it was, um, yeah. When I found that, I was like, "Wow." Anyway, so, but yeah, go back and look at it. Check it out, guys. Um, that's pretty much it. But I, you know, you guys decide what you want to do with the uh, with what you think as far as the uh, the slabbing versus the other because i think uh, versus the raw because i think that um you're the collector collect what you want do what you want with them and enjoy it you know enjoy the 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 medium because it's i think it's second to none i really do yep. it's a it's an amazing uh treat i think for all of us to be part of so appreciate you man so yeah, i know we got to finish up uh get some comics here going and i got to write some stuff how about you what do you got going for the day i'm working on I'm not even going to tell you a perk for Hatch that mm. I've not seen anybody do. I'm not saying they haven't. I haven't seen it. And I've been through Kickstarter and all the things like that. And I'm doing a perk that, I, as far as I can see, nobody else has done. All right. So I'll probably get on with that quick before somebody somebody works it out and puts it out before I do. All right. Well, let oh, me know what the perk is, and we'll get everything posted here, and we'll make yeah. sure uh, people see what's going on. When I've done it, I'll let the world know. Sounds good. Look forward to it. And the world's waiting, Glenn. So we'll All talk right. to you soon, man. Don't worry yep. too hard, you guys. Uh, read some later. comics. Yep, we'll yep. talk to you guys. Thanks so much. Welcome to the Comics Unlimited podcast. With your hosts, Glenn B. Fleming and Ted Davis.